All right, guys. Uh, hey, guys, back with another video. Um, so in this, this is the second video for chapter nine related to lower cost um, or net realizable value in lower cost or market. What we're going to look at here is that there's these two methods um, that we discuss, and they are basically the loss method and the cost of goods sold method. There's two different methods for writing down um, the inventory. And then the on the other side, we have the allowance versus using the inventory account. Okay, so whether or not we're gonna set up an allowance account or we're just gonna write off the inventory directly to the inventory account. All right, so we're gonna continue with example one that we had on the previous video. And I copied the facts, they're not necessarily very complicated, but just so we can remind ourselves, uh, cost was 60, NRV is uh, $50. All right, so here we're gonna be doing LCNRV. We have all the information we need and we're doing year one. And then at the bottom, if you can see, we're gonna do year two. All right, so let's go ahead and do year one first and then we'll walk through year two. Um, this should have most of the um, ins and outs of what you would have to do. Obviously, it could be a little more complicated at the beginning to solve for some of the numbers, but basically after that, I'm gonna cover more or less pretty much almost any iteration you would see, I believe and I'm gonna cover um, how it works. So let's do the loss method first, um, and let's differentiate between the loss and the cost goods sold method. Okay, so what's gonna happen in these problems is that um, we're going to, uh, the, the professor is going to state to you in the problem, okay, here's some data, and basically using the loss method or using the cost of goods sold method, um, give me the journal entry for this, okay? And so if it says use the loss method, all right, what we're gonna do is that we're going to use an account titled loss due to decline of inventory to NRV, net realizable value, okay? And in this case, that, that would be the debit, okay? It's a long title, um, you need to have something if not identical, something very similar to that on the exam or on quizzes, if they ask for it, you can't just write loss. Again, I've talked about that in other videos, but you cannot write just loss. You cannot write just gain. If you do, you're going to lose points with pretty much all the accounting professors, especially once you're getting into, especially in FAR 1 and FAR 2 as well, and pretty much all the accounting classes. Okay, so you would debit loss due to decline of inventory to net realizable value, and the debit would be for $10. And the way that we know that is that our cost is 60, but we wanna write it down to 50, right? So to get, it on, to get it on the books at 60, we'd have to, sorry, to get on the books at 50, we have to subtract out 10, okay? So that would be the debit if they said to do the loss method. Now the credit is also going to be specified, okay? Now the credit is where we have allowance or the inventory account, all right? And so let's say that they said to use the allowance method. If they said to use the allowance method, then you would have allowance to reduce inventory um, to NRV, okay? You would have that, and we'll, you would have that for 10. I wrote it off to the side because I'm gonna put a slash there. Um, if they tell you to write it down directly to the inventory account, and they say, do not use an allowance account, then you would just credit inventory, okay? So that's how that works. Um, then if they say to use the cost of goods sold method, you would do cost of goods sold as the debit for 10, and then the credit, it just depends, okay? If they say use the allowance, allowance to reduce inventory to NRV, or if they say to use inventory, it will specify, okay? But you just need to make sure that you're using the one that is specified in the problem, okay? The, the, the key thing to highlight here is that the loss and the cost of goods sold, right? Those are like interchangeable in the sense that those are going to be the two debits you would potentially use to write down inventory, okay? On the other side, you have allowance or inventory. You have one or the other, okay? It's some people get confused and they think maybe the allowance account is associated with the loss account or maybe inventory is associated with cost of goods sold or something like that. Um, that's not true. It's just you have to listen, you have to read the problem and you have to do what it tells you to do, right? So if it tells you use loss and allowance, you use loss and allowance. If it says cost goods sold and allowance, you do that or whatever iteration it is, it doesn't necessarily matter. You just have to make sure you know all the iterations and you have to just read the problem carefully 
And as long as you do that, you should be able to get it correct and just make sure you route your account titles and you should be good to go. But don't get this misconception that, you know, if you're using cost of goods sold, then you have to be crediting inventory or anything like that. Okay. Um, that's the first year. And then let's just go through the second year because this will highlight a point um, that is not always completely clear. So let's see. So I changed the facts. So I have year two. Cost is still 60. Okay. Again, we're doing LCNRV. Just to refresh, LCNRV. Uh, cost, $60. Net realizable value, 55 so as we can see, if we were to compare to year one, right, year one's at the top here, $50 is the NRV. Now the NRV is what? It's 55, right? So it, the NRV has what? It's gone up by five, right? And so what has happened is that our, our net realizable value is now five, uh, five higher than it was last year. However, it is still the lower one, right? So we still want to state the inventory on the books at $55. Now, if we think back to last year, what we did last year, the inventory, assuming we still haven't sold this inventory, right, which in this problem we have not, okay, the inventory would be sitting on the books at 50. And the reason we know that is because it was initially 60 and then we wrote it down, right? That's what the credit does here in either of these journal entries. It will write down the inventory, uh, the net realizable value of the inventory to $50, okay? But now we want it to be 55. So now we're actually going to have to do what's called a recovery of a loss, okay? So now our, our journal entry is going to look a little bit different. Now, again, we have loss method, okay? And so what happens here is that, again, it would have to specify, but it needs to tell you either use the allowance method or just write it, write it directly to inventory. But either way, our debit is to allowance to reduce inventory to net realizable value or inventory. Okay, that would be our debit. And um, our credit would be recovery of loss due to decline of inventory to NRV, NRV. Okay, so a couple things to, to notice here. One, we're recovering a loss. Okay, this is not a gain, right? We're not having gains in inventory. We talked about that in the last video. We cannot write up the inventory other than to recover a loss. Okay, so I said in the last video, you cannot write the inventory up above this initial cost, right? So let's say that instead the NRV was 65. Well, we would want to state it at cost. So what we would do in that case, because it would be 65 for NRV, cost would be the lower one. So what we would do is we would debit these this same account, okay? And then credit this same account, but it would be for 10, okay? You would not go all the way up to 65. You would stop at 60. 60 is basically the ceiling. You cannot go above the initial cost when you're writing the inventory up in the sense of recovering a loss. You can't do like a true write-up in the sense that you would, you know, inflate the inventory above its initial cost, okay? The other thing to notice here is that why does this make sense that we're doing this? The inventory one's probably pretty easy to see because we're debiting inventory, we're increasing an asset. The allowance to reduce inventory to NRV, what's happening there, if we think about our allowance account, okay, um, we would say that last period, right, we would have credited it, Okay, so it would, be, it would be sitting at 10 right now, but the thing about it is that we only want it to be at five, okay? And the reason we want it to be at five is because in the inventory account, we have $60, right? And so at the end of the day, we want, sorry, we want the five to be on this side because if we had 60 debit and we subtracted five credit, that means we would have 55 of NRV, right? So that would mean that we would have to have a debit to the allowance account and reduce that allowance account. And then it would have a balance of five credit. So then you would do 60 minus five, and then you would get 55 as your NRV and the inventory. And that's what we want. Finally, the cost of goods sold method. Um, just finishing up here. We, would, we have the exact same debit allowance to reduce inventory to NRV or inventory for five. And then the credit is simply cost of goods sold. This is the easiest one because it just always goes to cost of goods sold, um, whether you're increasing or decreasing cost of goods sold. And again, the same rules apply for writing up the inventory and everything we've gone over. Um, and so that basically concludes this video. This should clear up most of the issues that are associated with this topic. It is a little bit of a complex topic, but um, if you get into the weeds with it, then you should be good to go. So hope that helped and see you in the next video.